Hey guys, I'm Tabitha Lipkin and I am taking you on a super epic adventure through my current home country of Costa Rica. Now I've partnered with G Adventures and we're gonna start off in La Fortuna, then we're gonna go to Monteverde and then we are gonna end in Manuel Antonio. And of course, as you probably guessed, I'm taking you along on the ride, so uh, let's go. And I am so excited to take you guys along on this journey. First stop though, you gotta check out the waterfalls that are all along the side of the road. So we just arrived at one of the G spots for good. This is a coffee tour that we're gonna go on. Now this is in collaboration with Planetera and I'm excited because even though I live in Costa Rica, I have yet to go on a coffee tour, fun fact. And I learned so much on this tour. Now, mainly when are you supposed to pick coffee? Well, it's when they turn that reddish color. You know, if they're green, they're not gonna be any good. You wait until they're like this beautiful red. And then we got a surprise with some early morning coffee liqueur tastings. Yeah, Time to turn yeah, up. I didn't know what they were talking about. <laughs> All right, this is a coffee liqueur. It's a cute little cup. Cheers. Oh, it's good. 35%. 35% in here. <laughs> And this G for Good spot in collaboration with Planetera is really cool because you learn about all the ways that uh, me, Cafecito, is actually giving back to farmers in the local community. We also tried some of their sugar cane and we enjoyed it with none other than some moonshine. Now, fun fact, moonshine in Costa Rica uh, is not illegal to make by any means. It's only illegal to sell. Pura vida. So we just made it to the main town, um, our first stop of La Fortuna, and I've got an action-packed day tomorrow. Um, but for now, I heard there's a chocolate spot that's absolutely worth checking out, so I'm gonna go find it. The chocolate place, by the way, is called Chocolate Fusion, if you wanna check it out and you end up in La Fortuna. You guys wanna see one of the coolest plants I've ever seen? Look at that thing. All right, I know it's dark, but I'm finally getting to go to the hot springs. Oh my gosh. Ooh, and I can see them. I literally love the sounds at nighttime, the sounds of the crickets. And of course, you know, the thermal hot springs make it extra relaxing. There were hot and cold tubs, and I kind of walked around and explored it all. But this is actually my first stop at hot springs. I'm going to show you guys another much fancier hot springs in a couple of minutes. But this was a nice way to really be welcomed into La Fortuna. Good morning, we're gonna have an epic day. We are going waterfall jumping, we are going canyoning, we're going white water rafting, and since we're in R&R, &R, you know what else we're gonna do? We're gonna enjoy those thermal hot springs, so let's go. Oh, this jump is about 40 feet high, and it's my least favorite thing to do, is jumping from heights untethered. This is waterfall jumping and canyoning. So I signed up for this adventure tour where I ended up doing a little bit of canyoning, waterfall jumping, and uh, some rappelling, which was a ton of fun. Obviously got soaking wet. It did a lot more of that jumping. I told you I'm not the biggest fan. All right, we're gonna go jump. The big one, of course, is the one at the very end, and they save it for the very last thing, right? Here's me honestly looking over the edge, like, I don't know how I'm gonna do this, but there's all these people, and they're waiting, and they're watching, and I know I'm gonna have to do it eventually. And bam, I did it. One was enough for me. After I was done, they're like, you wanna do it again? I was like, nah, I'm okay. <laughs> And then it was time for the next ultimate experience. It was part of my tour package, which was part of the Bad Bunny crew, as we're being called. Uh, and we're now, we're gonna go white water rafting. And this was some of the most fun rafting that I've done. I've done a couple of rafting tours while living here in Costa Rica, but our guide made it the best time possible. And of course, we were very identifiable on the uh, river with our little bunny ears. And that's it. We just finished doing class two and class three rapids, which aren't as gnarly as the Pecuari River, which I've done near Trialba. But let me tell you, it was still pretty gnarly. And uh, now I get to go shower off, have some lunch, and I'm off finally to the hot thermal springs. So you're gonna definitely want to remember this name, Eco Termales, Eco Termales, okay. This was the most luxurious, relaxing, incredible hot springs I have ever been to. They actually limit the amount of people who are allowed to come in every single day. And I just was able to fully relax, especially after doing all that waterfall jumping and canyoning. My body was so sore. 
I saw this really nice guy who was showing me all these cool moves to do to enjoy under that waterfall and it totally let all the stress just come off my body. And then they opened up the bar and... I don't even know if you guys can hear me over the waterfall, but this is peak. Like, this is awesome. This is a Miss Cow Margarita, by the way, if you're wondering. It's really good. And there's a waterfall. We're on our way to Monteverde. So we just made it to Monteverde and the first thing I wanted to do once I got here was check out the hanging bridges because it's known for that. And um, it's a pretty nice day. It hasn't started raining yet, but I got my rain jacket just in case. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised. The bridges actually, <laughs> they wobble quite a bit more than I remember. I cannot get over how quiet it is right now. I can hear a river, I can hear like some crickets chirping, and it's just me. Try to just me and then I'm just gonna put my face in there. No, just pretty cool. Each bridge told you the length, the height, the amount of people who could be on it. And uh, I got really lucky because I ended up being pretty alone most of my uh, hike through the hanging bridges. Of course, the second I take off my rain jacket, it starts to rain. <laughs> Woo! It's all right, I have a hood. I should probably put that on. It's a good thing I brought this and that it has a hood. That's pretty nice too. So I kind of went off path, but not totally because there was obviously like another path that deviated that was, you know, a little more muddy. Um, and I was a little anxious that I wasn't going the right way, but then I saw this bridge, which tells me that I'm not, not going the right way. I hear water, so I'm hoping it leads me to like the river or a waterfall, but we'll see. So it turns out it led to this reptile, an animal spot, but I don't think I'm supposed to go there because it's locked. That's kind of a bummer. The sun finally started to peek out towards the very end uh, of me figuring my way back to the hanging bridges before finally going to, can you guess where I'm gonna go next? It's actually a part of the hanging bridges. They have a- The sloth sanctuary. One of them decided to move to find a snack. Let me show you. Probably the fastest I've seen a sloth move since I've been in Costa Rica. So this sanctuary has six female sloths. They have two-toed sloths. And in Costa Rica, you have two different kinds. You have the two-toed sloths and the three-toed sloths. And I guess it was snack time because we actually got to see the sloths out and about and moving around, which is not something you often see when you go to a sloth sanctuary. They sleep most of the day and they're quite slow. So getting the opportunity to see them moving around and looking for snacks in their different bowls across the habitat was really cool. Now, all of these sloths are monitored um, scientifically, they weigh them and measure them um, each week and make sure that they're all getting the right nutrition, especially when you have some sloths that wake up early and steal food from all the bulls. And sloth sanctuaries are really important because what happens usually is sloths will fall out of trees when they're little and sometimes, you know, predators get them and they do have a lot of natural predators, but if they're able to be rescued, they can be rehabilitated and often put back in the wild. Sometimes they can't and they end up in sanctuaries like this one that we visited. Now we're gonna go for a night walk and um, I have gone out at night and found some, ooh, you probably can't see me very well. Let's put the light on my face, there we go. I have gone out before and found some poisonous dart frogs, but I haven't gone on an official night walk, so I'm gonna take you guys along on the walk. Okay, I saw it with my own eyes. I'm showing you what it looks like in the guidebook, but we saw a kinkyu, which was really exciting. You don't often see those. They've kind of got, you know, a face of a monkey and a body of a cat. We also saw this a uh, pit viper, which is deadly. And it's tiny, even though I'm zoomed in pretty tight here, they're actually quite small. On top of that, we ended up seeing another uh, snake in the tree. I mean, it's nighttime, he was sleeping, he was chilling out. This one, my understanding is not venomous. We saw a tarantula, which I thought was the coolest thing we saw. And we ended strong seeing a scorpion. It was neat to see them under kind of that black light too, to see how they glow. Geared up. So today we're actually gonna go zip lining and we're gonna do a Tarzan swing. And my understanding is that this is the longest zip line in Latin America. And we're gonna put that to the test. It's supposed to be about a kilometer long. Let's go. 
Let's talk about the longest zip line in Latin America. We were all joking about what does that actually mean? Well, there's several different zip lines you get to go on before you finally make your way to the longest zip line in Latin America. And you can do it one of two ways. You can do it the regular zip line style that you see, or you can do the Superman style, which is what I opted for. This is the longest zip line in Latin America, baby! really long. I said about a kilometer. It's about a mile. Look, are you recording? Yes, I am. And here I am facing my fears once again, this time just jumping off this, they called it a Tarzan swing. I, it was more of a free fall before it finally swung there. And they ask you beforehand, hey, do you have any neck or back problems or heart problems? I don't, but <laughs> I feel like I did afterwards, but it was pretty epic. And that was uh, how you end your zipline adventure. And then I met Furlander here who let me film him painting and his art studio is incredible. And I actually got one of my favorite pieces ever from him. So I just got an awesome piece of art from Furlander. Um, it was really cool of him to let me film him painting. And I'm walking up this massive hill from the town of Monteverde. Cause our hotel, straight uphill one way, but the other way it's straight downhill. So that's good. Now, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna go exploring and see what I can find. So Bruce and I are walking around and I think we're gonna check out this abandoned, what looks like a hostel. It's kinda, let's see. I'm not sure exactly what this is. It was obviously some sort of old hotel or hostel and it has since been abandoned and covered in graffiti. I thought this was really cool. This was just on the side of the road and despite being abandoned was actually in pretty good shape and there's lots of neat artwork everywhere we got to explore. There was an upstairs and a downstairs and it looked like some sort of old pizza oven and a bar. So I don't know, that was something kind of neat you wouldn't expect to see while you're exploring Costa Rica. I got my helmet on. Any guesses on what we're gonna be doing now? Well, we're gonna go horseback riding. And at first I wasn't so sure if I wanted to go horseback riding here because to be honest in Tamarindo, I do not suggest you go horseback riding because those horses aren't very well taken care of. But here in Monteverde, there's many ranches and our guide that's coming with us throughout this trip was like, hey, just so you know, this is a family run ranch. The horses are treated really well and it's a great thing to do. So I wanted to support their business and I'm gonna check it out. This is my horse. Carmelo. So the whole point of the horseback riding is to get to this beautiful sunset spot in Monteverde. I had a really good time. I was with some of my other G Adventure travelers who had never been on a horse. However, when we finally made it to the sunset spot, I was quite optimistic, but... So we made it to the super scenic sunset spot. This is Costa Rica, baby. And um, it's also a cloud forest. So I think it's cool to see the clouds like this, honestly, with the hills. I think this is pretty. I think we'll see sunsets when we go to the beach. So I appreciate it. And by the way, if you haven't met, this is Carmelo. Carmelo's super chill. He's been keeping me super safe on these trips. Yeah, we didn't see much of a sunset, but we did see that famous fog that seems to follow me at every scenic viewpoint. And of course, as soon as we were done and we said goodbye to our horses and I said goodbye to Carmelo, Carmelo my ride. sweet horse, Thank you. there's this epic sunset you can see in the distance, but isn't that always how it happens? The horseback riding concludes with learning some activities from farm life, which includes making this tasty, like sweet treat, which is basically made of sugar. And then they gave us some empanadas and said, we hope you have a wonderful night. Oh, it's good. You like this? Yes. Good. <laughs> mm. It kind of, kind of looks like a penis in my video. <laughs> Good morning, it's no makeup morning, but uh, I am on the Crocodile Bridge and 
We are on our way to Manuel Antonio, a province I've actually not been to in Costa Rica, so I'm super excited, but I've also never actually stood on the crocodile bridge. I've only driven across it. I ended up seeing not one, but two crocodiles. And the reason they tend to gather here, you're not supposed to do it anymore, but I've seen people do it when I drive around the bridge is people will throw things over to the crocs. Just make sure you're never the one to go over on the bridge. So our hotel is just actually up the way from Manuel Antonio. So I'm walking to town to check it out, even though I was advised not necessarily to walk to town because there's not sidewalks, but I live here. So I'm pretty used to there not being sidewalks where I need to walk anyway. Um, but I'm quite excited because I've, I've never been here and um, it's got one of the best, if not the best national parks in all of Costa Rica and one of the most beautiful beaches. Oh, and I found a dog. Hi, Bubs. Hi. Say hi to camera. I was just filming. Oh. So I met this sweet dog about, I don't know, a kilometer back, and she's been leading me the whole way. Hold on. So fun fact, I actually thought I was walking to Manuel Antonio. I was not. I was walking the other way to Capos. And that's okay because it was still really beautiful and I found um, this beautiful marina and I was able to see um, some of the local kids who were doing their band practice and I got to enjoy that a little bit and see some of their Christmas decorations that had just been put up. And there's that sweet girl who followed me all the way to Capos. I am super sweaty from all of my walking, but I did find this incredible beach and park. And I say find, I mean, someone told me where it was, but it's called Playa Naomi. And the water is like so turquoise blue and we're about two hours from sunset and sorry, still sweating. And uh, I'm gonna keep exploring the beaches around here. I think I'm gonna make my way all the way over to Manuel Antonio and see what that beach is like, even though I am gonna go there into the national park tomorrow, but I wanna see what the public beach is like too. I ended up taking a taxi to Manuel Antonio finally. It was, I'm so glad I didn't try to walk. I would have never made it. But once I got to Manuel Antonio, I was like, man, it's pretty busy over here. I heard there's this great beach that's more secluded. I should go check it out. And it's called uh, Playa Bizanz, B-I-E-S-A-N-Z, Playa Bizanz. And it was awesome. It's a locals beach and I had a great time, obviously, especially when you arrive and there's some coconuts with a little bit of coconut rum. So we made it to Playa Bizanz and look at this view. And when I got here, there was a lady selling coconuts and she put a shot of coconut rum in there. And so this is just the most delicious thing I've had all week and I'm super excited about it. It's my last day traveling around Costa Rica with G Adventures and on this very last day since we are in the Cape Post Manuel Antonio area, I decided to do something that I personally like to do, especially you guys know with my family, we love to go sailing. So they had a catamaran tour and I was like, you know what, versus staying on the beach, I would like to go out and be in the ocean a little bit. So I'm at the marina and we're gonna go out on the catamaran for the next two, three hours. It's a little touristy, but you know what? Sometimes it's fun to be touristy and do touristy things. So that's exactly what we're gonna do especially on a day that's as beautiful as this morning was. Um, it wasn't two or three hours, it was closer to four or five hours. And uh, we learned something while we were out there that I didn't know was included in our ticket. Guess who just found out recently with Mona that we get four free alcoholic drinks with our ticket. <laughs> and it's 10 a.m. So we're having a good time. <laughs> Of course, I had to jump off of a high platform one last time. That makes it three for three on this trip and check out the amazing slide. The boat itself, it had everything. I mean, it had nice little hammock areas where you could hang out. It had those cold plunge tubs. It had the slides, it had an upper deck. They gave us fresh fruit and of course, tasty drinks. Finished our catamaran tour and now we are going finally to Manuel Antonio National Park, something I've been looking forward to for Many, many months, finally here. But, uh, I'm just trying to recover from all the cocktails from the catamaran, if I'm being honest with you. It's, <laughs> it's 
actually quite tired. Manuel Antonio National Park is the most famous park in all of Costa Rica. People come from all over the world because there's such an abundance and variety of wildlife. If you visit these parks, I highly suggest that you hire one of the local guides to take you around and show you different things. I handed the guide my phone to get some of these beautiful videos that I'm showing you here. He also took some great pictures that I was able to share with everyone. And do know that the park opens pretty early. I think you can get in at seven or eight a.m. Go immediately to one of the two beaches and relax, especially at low tide, um, and then go see the rest of the park. The park closes at 4 p.m., but it can get very, very busy because it's so popular. But I mean, these beaches are just incredible. And that concludes my trip with G Adventures through Costa Rica. It's a beautiful country. I'm so fortunate I get to call home.